what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest YAAP ROM and this YAAP stands for I think yet another AOSP ROM and here as you can see this ROM file is about 1.3 GB and here some things are mentioned in the notes that the G apps are included and this is a OSS vendor based ROM not a like MIUI vendor based ROM so you gotta keep that in mind and if you want to flash this ROM just click on the card on the top right corner right over there and here as you can see it says due to Android 11 changes pin encryption won't work in TWRP so if you have TWRP recovery I won't quite suggest using that I would say go for orange box recovery and go decrypted way and you can like of course watch this particular video again to go decrypted way and right now I'm decrypted I flash the ROM with the uh, fcrypt disabler and it worked totally fine now jumping into the about section over here as you can see the android version is of course android 11 and here is how it looks like it shows this like kind of logo over here and the security patch is latest of november 5th 2020 the stock kernel here is interestingly is this yaap rafael kernel not the perf g kernel i think and by the way this is the third december 2020 build now jumping into the about section this is how it looks like we have this yaap updater over here this is still an alpha build so i just am reminding you that because this is not actually a stable release this is still an alpha release so do not expect everything to be super stable there are some things that i will mention over here that makes this rom not that great here in the front camera settings as you can see we have this front camera led settings then we have this like front camera sound effects if you want to have those and then we have this calibration thing if you tap on calibrate of course it will calibrate the pop-up camera let me go back and the stock keyboard over here is again gboard that is not an issue let me actually show you the home screen first this is how it looks like and talking with the stock camera here well this is the old kind of google camera as you are noticing and yeah this is a pretty basic google camera you can take basic photos or videos but here i have installed the unix version of the google camera this is working totally fine with all the lenses as you can see with the telephoto i mean wide angle lens and even with the telephoto lens as you can see it works fine even you can take night sight pictures with this so yeah this camera works fine this is the unique version and you can find it on the card right there by the way the wallpaper i'm using from actually i downloaded it from twitter if you want to have this starship wallpaper i'll link the tweet in the description box below pretty excited about the 15 kilometer hop i would say now let me come back to the launcher kind of thing and let me go into the settings this is actually the yaap launcher as you can see it says over here if i go into the app info it says yaap launcher over here and in the settings if you go over here it says allow edit and stuff then notification dots and icon pack you can change that there is another option for this kind of icon pack and there is the hidden and protected apps let me actually tap the fingerprint scanner and it shows like this you can lock particular apps so i just locked the telegram app over here and right now let me actually do this as you can see it says hidden and protected app so that is really great that we have this kind of app lock over here let me actually go back from here and we have this show google app on the left side and suggestions you can disable it so that is what i'm liking over here but as you can see there is no option to double tap to sleep over here but it is there let me show you you can double tap anywhere on the home screen and that will make the phone sleep let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed quickly as you can see let me do this and i'm really loving this double tap to sleep feature anywhere on the home screen and it is also there on the status bar and you can use that as you can see so yeah if you're noticing the fingerprint scanner is really really fast no issues with the fingerprint scanner this is a mi 9 fod i think and here as you can see it unlocks fairly fast even with the lock screen let me show you as you can see it unlocked fine and again let me show you from the lock screen it unlocked fine now on the stock launcher again to the left side we have this google's discover page so that is great swiping down gets you to the notification panel or the quick settings panel swiping up gets you to the app drawer and you can search for any app just like this over here so that is really good and the widgets are working fine over here as you are noticing and by the way this is how the recent panel look like and here you can take a screenshot just like this you can edit the screenshot or do whatever any doodle kind of thing if you want to so that is great and there is also this share option over here with which you can directly share without even taking a screenshot you can share this screen with anybody in your any messaging app i guess 
So that is really good. Or even in social media, you can share it from right here. And it shows this HD capable kind of thing over here on the status bar. But the good thing is you can actually hide this notification for the lock screen. Let me show you. As you can see, you cannot disable this thing over here. It will stay on this status bar. This is because of Vaulty. But if you click on this IMS kind of settings, and as you can see, you can actually disable this thing by clicking on this don't show notification at all. So yeah, in the lock screen, it does not display that kind of HD logo if you disable that. And it does show the weather and stuff over here on the lock screen, so it looks great. Now in the quick settings panel, again, this is how it looks like and you can add multiple toggles from here. Let me actually show you what you can add. So here, if you scroll down, as you can see, there are a lot of things like live caption and stuff. This is the app kind of quick toggles over here. And there is also the DC dimming feature if you want that. But here, let me actually show you there is a screen recording feature with which you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time. So that is great that this is there. So yeah, the default screen recorder is pretty fine. But there is no FPS info, I think. And there is a dark theme, night light, etc. So those are totally working fine without any issues. I have been using it with the dark theme, no issues with that. Now in network settings, there is the Wi-Fi calling. As you can see, I have enabled the Wi-Fi calling. And as you can see, the Vaulty calling are actually working fine. Even VO Wi-Fi works fine. But right now it's not there. No call recording option as of right now on this stock dialer. Because this is a pixel dialer, so not that much of a problem, I think. Now let me jump into the settings panel here inside YASP settings. In the status bar, we have the status bar items and we have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons and we have the battery icon, Wi-Fi icon, etc. You can disable or enable those and network traffic display is there. Then inside battery style, we have the portrait, circle, text, etc. Then we have the show percentage option inside the icon of the battery. So that thing is there. In the quick settings, we have the brightness slider, show quick setting for your text, media player, etc. is there. Then we have the navigation bar. And inside gestures, we have the USB gestures. By the way, you cannot actually change the size of this spill bar on the bottom. So that is kind of how it is. And two button and three button navigation both are there. So that's great. And here, if I go back, we have the quickly open camera and prevent ringing option. Then double tap to sleep on the status bar and lock screen. Both are there. Screen of power button toggle torch is there. That works super fine. Now in the lock screen, we have the charging info, the media artwork kind of stuff. And smart space is there. Let me go back. We have the power menu. We have the device control, sensitive content and advanced reboot when even locked. So that thing is there. Let me go back in the notifications. We have the notification header disabling option. Then ambient edge lighting is there. And of course, you can change the color of the ambient edge lighting if you want to, I guess. If you set it to custom color. Yeah, as you can see, we have the in-call vibration like this, vibrate on connect call, call waiting, etc. And the battery charging light is there and you can set it to do not disturb even, I would say. And we have this blink flashlight for incoming call. This is the MIUI kind of feature. And you can see the about section of this YAP ROM from here and you can donate to the developers. Now in the battery settings, this is how it looks like. And we have the battery temperature over here. There is the screen on time and the battery percentage option is also there. You can disable or enable that. And if you tap on this battery icon, it will show you the full battery usage. And in terms of battery life, I would say I got about seven hours of screen on time as you can see from the screenshots. And 18 watt fast charging also works. I would say the battery life is decent enough, not too bad in my opinion. Now in the display settings, we have some interesting things like this custom display settings like DC dimming is there. And also there is this high brightness mode. Let's assume you are in outdoor conditions. If I enable this, as you can see, the screen becomes too much bright. And actually, let me show you, this is the like maximum brightness the screen normally goes. And if I enable this, you will notice a drastic improvement in terms of the brightness of the screen. As you are noticing, this is how the quick setting panel looks like without that extra brightness. Right now with high brightness, this is how the quick setting panel looks like. So if you're noticing the display really goes really, really bright, I would say with this kind of feature, really helpful in my opinion. And by the way, there is no option to actually increase or decrease brightness by just doing this over here, which I am missing. So yeah, that's how it is. That feature is not there yet. Now there is the adaptive brightness and nightlight scheduling option. Then we have the screen timeout, then auto rotated screen colors are set to boosted by default. Then inside lock screen here, we have some like always on display option and inside custom options. This is how we get the new notification, wake up on charge, pick up, etc. So they are there, but yes, there is no option to have that always unlock with a fingerprint scanner. You have to enter pin over here, 
whenever you're rebooting so that you need to keep in mind here we have the dark theme and you can schedule it if you want to and here we have the accent color changing option currently i have set it to blue you can also change it to these many accent colors plethora of accent colors are actually there even one plus red and stuff is there as you can see samsung blue is there spotify green starbucks green etc options are there lot of accent colors in my opinion and we have plethora of headline and body fonts as you can see including the lg smart gothic one plus slate samsung one etc then we have the icon shapes again plethora of icon shapes as you are noticing and here we have the icon packs let me go back to the sound settings here we have the sound settings of course and we have the volume panel timeout you can actually set the timeout for the volume panel and this is how the volume panel looks like by the way and you can expand the volume panel just like this as you can see and we have the vibrate for calls kind of changing option then ringtone vibration pattern you can change that too from here inside advanced if i scroll down we have the live caption phone ringtone etc then you can disable the screenshots or the sound touch sound touch vibration etc and then we have the me audio direct this i have been using with the youth edition and with this i would say the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is great no issues that i found even with the headphone jack or speaker or even bluetooth and here we have the hi-fi audio preset and inside the sound preset we have these rock jazz pop etc options now inside security we only have this fingerprint option no face unlock over here but in terms of that app lock as you can see I have locked this with the launcher kind of settings and it does work fine with the app lock no issues with that now let's talk about the drm info as you can see with the drm info it shows the level one certificate so that means you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p with the white vine l1 certificate and this is one thing i am kind of disappointed about but not so much it won't harm you much if you are someone who is flashing magisk because you can simply use magisk hide for using banking apps but by default over here i do not have flashed magisk and here the safety net test just fails so that means i cannot use banking apps like google pay right out of the box you particularly need magisk hide to actually use any kind of banking apps over here because both the basic integrity and cts profile fails and by the way this is how the power menu looks like and here you do have this advanced reboot option inside this reboot menu and if i tap reboot as you can see we have the directly rebooting option to normally restart then reboot to bootloader or fast boot then we have the reboot to recovery option directly and we have the reboot to system ui so this is just gonna like quickly reboot the ui and then we have the home controls so this is how the power menu looks like and the advanced reboot is enabled by default right now let me just open some of the apps and show you guys the app you know, speeds and the ram management here now let's open twitter play store youtube now let me open instagram google home now what else should i open spotify and let's open amazon now let's open flipkart also let's open the me store I think these are opened already so yeah now let's open the me home app too right now let me just open all these apps from memory let's open chrome facebook twitter okay so twitter reloaded play store is there in memory youtube is reloading so the ram management may not be that great instagram even is reloading google home again reloading amazon reloading so i would say all the apps are reloading kind of the me store is in memory the safety net was in memory flipkart is reloading so yeah not that great of a ram management i would say facebook is in memory twitter is in memory right now okay so play store still in memory instagram still in memory google home it might be that like kind of error where like for the first time it does not keep all the apps in memory but for the second time all the app stays in memory drm info was kind of closed i guess flipkart is still in memory me store still in memory so the ram management is kind of here and there but yes the chrome has been like there in memory from the beginning even facebook right now is there youtube is there so yeah that's how it is the memory management might be kind of here and there but in terms of performance i would say the rom was pretty great with my kind of usage and here are the end to end geekbench score of this rom 
So thank you so much for watching this video guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down below if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD and Tech signing off for today. I'll be watching you guys in the next one. Bye now. Thank you.